I want you to tell Dice High for me. I will okay. do that for sure. And for sure. About every 18 months or, t- or every 24 months, okay. I watch Crime Story again. On purpose? Like, oh, yes. I like yeah. this. Yeah, it was great. It, no, was I, the, I, it was the forerunner of The Sopranos. Yeah. For, for the casual the viewer, cast. this is 1986, 87, 88. And it has Tony Dennison. Yep. And it has uh, the, uh, the, Pretty sh- much. The, the Chicago cop yeah. uh-huh. with the mustache. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I could see Dennis his name. Farina. Dennis Farina. Dennis yeah. Farina. And, uh, and they're a mob boss and Chicago cop. And it's fantastic. They go to Vegas. And Andrew Dice Clay is the liaison between the Chicago and Las Vegas mob and the Meyer Lansky type yeah. down in yeah, yeah, yeah. Florida. And Dice is just—he just, he it's just like looks casino. great. It's like Casino. Yeah, yeah. The movie Casino, like that. That those but, but people. Dice, Dice plays the rational guy. Yeah, you know? isn't and, that funny? And I'm watching it, and I'm thinking, it's 1986, 87, 88. Poor Dice, poor Dice. He's <laughs> going to be the first guy, the first guy to take on political correctness. Okay. Ah! The first guy, because it's 1989 when the world explodes, Dice career blows up, and all of a sudden he stands up to the gay community that wants him to stop telling gay jokes, and yeah, he stands yeah, yeah. on freedom of speech. He has me going on Channel 9, Channel 5, <laughs> Channel 2, defending him. Really? Just right for free speech. Yeah, he had me do all this. And it was a, it was a forerunner of today's woke uh, controversy. Oh, absolutely. And Dice was the first guy crucified. <laughs> and- Agreed. I hate when people are like, I was the first one in cancel culture. I'm like, oh, no, you weren't. No, no, oh, it no, wasn't. you weren't. And, and, but the same thing happened because he goes out in the real world and he sells out Madison Square Garden because yeah. the country agrees with him. My my favorite is um, the, the <clears throat> uh, producer. Uh, was it Michael Mann? Yeah, yeah. Michael? Okay, so uh, he said to him, don't, don't cancel! Don't get to! Don't cancel the show! And he, and I guess they were saying like the viewership, and he's like, no, no, no! I'm gonna be huge! I'm gonna be huge! And they're like, yeah, whatever, kid. Yeah. Go do your sketches. <laughs> you know, like it, it, they were literally. Yeah. That's how young and like. Well, I did. You know, some, I was, did some reading on it, and what happened was Brandon Tartikoff at NBC terrific guy. screwed him. Screwed, really? Yes, he it kept oh, pushing he him with the, with the, the, the with the uh, lineup scheduling. Oh. They kept moving it around. They, oh, I they see. They tried to put it up against moonlighting, you know, and okay. it just got clobbered. And this was a great crime drama that belonged Friday night, 10 o'clock. I mean, think of now, though. It's all that's on are crime dramas. That's it. Like yeah. the CIS, uh, Law and Order, uh, what's Andrew does an impression of the Chicago guy, Chicago and then, Hope, and Chicago then the, Fire. The, the one that lasted 12 years uh NYPD Blue. NYPD, but they're all like huge. I mean, they're Andrews was more yeah. of like mobster thing, like Soprano S. Yeah, and it probably would have done better on like an HBO. Well, I talked to Tony Dennison. I, I know him. And, okay, and he told me that there was a lot of lead up to The Sopranos. Of course, off, off of them. Yeah, yeah, and they. Um, I mean, Andrew said the cast. They all got along. They they just had so much fun. Yeah. You know, filming in Chicago. Just, but in his mind, he was telling them like, "Please don't. You know, you're you going to love me, man. <laughs> man. Give me a couple more weeks. I'm doing this thing with Rodney Dangerfield. Yeah. They were like, "Yeah, cool. Rodney's funny. Yeah. You know, like <laughs> we don't know about you, kid, but Rodney's hilarious. Oh. Like, so cool. Like when he tells those stories, because it does make me laugh. Because you." You know, you don't think about that. Like, is that me or you? No, that's me. You're tweeting? You're a wanted man. Uh, Is that the deal? Chinese girls won't leave me alone with their crypto (laughs) after. Marcus is on TikTok. If if they were only built. (laughs) (laughs) He had poor things. That's great. Let me turn this thing He is grandfathered in, so don't try to cancel Uh, Argus. (laughs) Yeah, what are you going to ruin my last two years? (laughs) How no. dare you control what I try to say in a country that I colonized? <laughs> yeah, there you go. He's okay. one of the Whigs and or you're the welcome, Tories all or of you. something. Did I not <laughs> establish a country where Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, oh. Italian Americans, Polish Americans, Russian Americans, German Americans, Irish Americans, African Americans all work together and build our dreams 
on Native American land <laughs> under Anglo-Saxon supervision. Love it. This is a, an Argus classic, by the way. <laughs> you know, one well, of somebody our, had to work it for us. I don't know if I ever told you this, but one of our favorite things, like when I was waiting tables here. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you, I mean, you remember my friend Lauren? Sure. Cute little yeah, br- yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. brunette from New York, kind of raspy voice, like, hey, Argus, yeah. you know, um, then Anna, real pretty blonde. Which was the one that was powerless over um, our little com- comedian from San Francisco. He got well. Uh, I don't know. S- San Francisco. I don't. What do you mean powerless over? Uh, I don't. This that makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> this is, let's rephrase. Okay. Untreated al <laughs> <laughs> And That I get. Okay. Uh, okay. Steve Kravitz. Oh. What was her, her name? Wow, you might be going too far back. I oh, really? Yeah, this I don't is know. 89, 90? No, no, I, oh, I started okay. in 93. Oh, okay. All okay, because right. I was like, wait, which one is that? <laughs> it's Kravitz, because oh, he was already... Mitzi used to hire untreated al just like Always her. funny. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so, we, so we could never do any wrong. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I remember that my first ex fiance, and you helped me out with that because he was using, he was, yeah. and I, the only person I could think to call when I found like certain stuff in his apartment, I, I called you and you go, what, tell me what's there. And I told you exactly what's there. And you go, oh, honey, you have to leave him. Yeah. <laughs> He's not coming back. No. And uh, he didn't. He, yeah. I mean, he went to Betty for, he got help. He's doing great now. Yeah. But he wasn't coming back to the, person that i knew well back in the old days i i liked i like mixed drinks yeah okay i, I like to mix rum with crack i love that <laughs> that's, no. that's a hell of a mix no, I, I got sober that's a year a before crack. cocktail no I, I got sober a year before crack i got sober in 86 and then later Crack's on it's been around a minute kennison told me how much i would have loved ecstasy he still oh yeah because it's all mixed is it i don't know i never I, tried I, I it but it people great. told me what it was yeah and i had two boyfriends that tried to push hard for me yeah. to do that with them because it's like a well the scariest thing drug. is is whenever newcomers come into recovery I, i'm i'm a rascal always will be and i welcome them to the program and then okay. i ask them how's the blow now <laughs> You know, and I love that you're and, still curious. And, and and you know what? That they tell me something that scared the hell out of me. I was at the governor's mansion in Oklahoma City for a fundraiser that for makes a big rehab, sense. and I saw somebody I knew from the meetings in Oklahoma City, and and we said hi to each other and all that. And I said, "How you doing?" I said, "I said to her, you must have about twenty years sober now." She said, "Well, I have four because I went out." <laughs> and first thing I said was, "Oh." I said, how's the cocaine now? <laughs> and she said, Argus, she said, oh. I kept a, a gold medal sack, flower sack full of it on top of my refrigerator no. and didn't touch it for six months. I said, why? And she said, because crystal meth is so much better. Oh. <laughs> and I said, oh, my God, I mean, that cheap stuff, if, it, if, if that is yeah. better than blow and it's worth it, you can get it for $5. There's no wonder that's an epidemic. It's I did. Yeah, like I watched. Locust. I just watched um, Griselda. Have you seen this? Yeah. OK, so she was like uh, she basically started the whole cocaine into the distributing into the United States. Oh, yes, I did see that. I did see that. I did. Right? Yeah, from Miami. Yeah. Well, she was also like they they talk about her in the cocaine cowboy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. That's where I heard about her. But she was doing crack. That that's what I'm saying. It was there. We didn't know it. They called it something else in Colombia. And oh. she was she got hooked on that. Wow. And so she would you know, she would go crazy, paranoid, whatever. But yeah. she was she was like, Oh, I'm not You're sure it coke. wasn't free base? I'm almost positive. Oh, there she is. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's her, all right. I can't believe they had Sophia Regard play that. But, play see, her. but see, what I thought, you know, I had about two or three years of sobriety when it swept through Los Angeles. In the Netflix and show, they said crack. Yeah, go ahead. I, I thought it was really racist for, to, for the CIA to let this stuff in because they were giving you a cocaine high for $10. Mm-hmm. And that was destroying South Central Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Just, I mean, really, yeah. just no, I laying you. waste to it. I believe you. I, and I mean, in a snobby way, if, if cocaine high, you must have $120 <laughs> to be on my level. You know? <laughs> but that's still. There's levels to this shit. Says, I know, I know. Yeah, I mean, Philadelphia is the worst right now. <laughs> Kensington has that, but it's the opioid. It's um, heroin. I well, think, our, or... our dealer in the late 70s and early 80s was Debbie at Doheny and Sunset. <laughs> and she was like the den mother. Right. When Mitzi was working, okay, got it. And there were about eight or nine or ten of us, 
Tim Thomerson, Biff Maynard, Kip Adada, Mike Binder, me, Mitchell Walters, Alan Steven, Alan yep. Bursky. Perfect. We were all in Debbie's little Cub Scout den, den okay? <laughs> <laughs> and Debbie was wonderful because she was honest. She was the most yeah, yeah. honest pirate you ever had. Because if you had $120 for a comedian, she would sell you an honest gram. If you only had okay. 100 she would sell you a slightly cut gram. If you had 60 a full honest gram, 50 she, she would sell you a slightly cut half gram. If you were down to your last $15— she would show you her boobs. Oh. <laughs> Nobody left Debbie's with a nickel. Right, right, right. <laughs> she got it all out of here. She's the God best pirate her. I ever met. God bless her. <laughs> and her reputation for cutting was legendary. One time, she, <laughs> one time before <laughs> Thanksgiving, okay, one time before Thanksgiving, she's, she's got us all gathered around four o'clock in the morning in the living room and watching okay. Cal Worthington commercials. <laughs> Higher and hell. <laughs> and Debbie says, I want all of you to come to my Thanksgiving because I, I, she okay. do a Thanksgiving dinner at her apartment for her boys every year. Uh -huh. And Mitchell, Mitchell Walter, she said, Mitchell, are you coming? He said, oh, nah, okay. I'm not coming. She said, why not? He said, you just cut the turkey with chicken. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get um, part of part of my one of my favorite Mitchell Walters things is when he passed. Unfortunately, um, he passed away, but he was cremated. Yeah, and he gave everybody a vial. Really? Of his <laughs> of his cremation. Mitchell Walters, for you Unbelievable. visitors, he was a baby boomer uh, in our our class of seventy six. Mitchell Walters <laughs> was was the racetrack New Yorker. Gambling junkie, yeah, that was the the the, the artful dodger. What a what a like I mean, he aura. could, he could like, con like, you out uh, of anything. Unbelievable. I, I saw him get hired by George Slaughter for the new Laughing Show just by doing card tricks for George. Okay, <sighs> thirteen weeks, yeah, a thousand dollars a week just from the card. He tricks. can sell you on anything. And, and, he, and we're right here underneath the the, the parking lot door here. And here's okay. what happened one night. One night, Mitchell Walters wrote uh, a great cocaine joke. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. He entered the comedy store at that right above us here. And by the time he walked down to the main room, he had sold the same joke to four different comedians, That's raised a hundred dollars, then drove to Debbie's house for a cut gram. <laughs> That is your happy ending. So good. <laughs> yeah. Sold it. Four Would he still do the joke after he sold it? Uh, no, no, he was. Okay. He had he had he was, principles. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just curious if he's selling. He didn't want it to interrupt. It, he he didn't want, want it to interrupt his gambling. Yeah, hunt. yeah, yeah. Don't mess with my. <laughs> that, that was his deal. But people like would be like, "Whoa, I met Mitchell Walters," you know, and they're, they like years late, you know, um, like in the '90s, yeah. whatever, to early 2000s, and they'd be like, "Oh, yeah, I met with Mitchell Walters. What great stories!" And then I gave him two hundred dollars, and I was like, "Oh my god, <laughs> he's still getting money out of people." God bless him. Like he was a hustler till the end. Man. His his prototype was a comedian in the late 1940s named Joe Frisco, and Joe Frisco was the pet comedian of Bob Hope and Bing Crosby. Okay, okay. and Frisco was <laughs> a drinking was, was, was a racetrack <laughs> racetrack junkie, gambling junkie, just like Mitchell. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and I bring this up for this great story. Bing and Bob were sitting in the Brown Derby restaurant in Hollywood in 1948, oh, yeah, yeah. okay, right. in Hollywood. And the little person, Billy Barty, walks in, okay. okay, to say hi to everybody. They all know him from the movie. Billy Barty walks right up to the table, okay, and 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 puts his head on his table like this, <laughs> like this looks around, and Joe Frisco says, hey, who ordered John the Baptist? <laughs> <gasps> That's great. <laughs> That's Mitchell. That, yeah, 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 That's yeah. Mitchell. Did, so that guy worked with Bob Hope. Did he ever work here? Uh, he Joe, Joe Frisco would have probably opened at Ciro's, like, because he worked all the clubs in LA. Okay, so he yeah. was before a little bit before the time. Oh yeah, yeah, the, yeah. What year did you get here? I got here in March of seventy six. Seventy six. Marsha Warfield and I started the same night together. Oh wow! Yeah. I love her. We had a. Um, it so happened that there was a. National reporter from Orbit magazine. Do you remember Orbit? No. <clears throat> okay, it was a Sunday supplement that was in all the Sunday newspapers around the country. Okay. And it was basically like a people magazine of its time. Right, okay. Okay, but, you know, what's going on Hollywood, this, that, and the other. And it was in the same Orbit magazine was in all of them. We had a reporter there that night. Uh -huh. And we didn't know it. We were just, I'm doing my first open mic. Yeah. And <clears throat> I get up on stage 
And uh, I do my first joke. <laughs> I just got here from Oklahoma, and we're not as hip as they are in Hollywood. You know? <laughs> Our pedestrian lights flash mosey, mosey and, and don't, don't mosey. mosey. Got a huge laugh, right. okay? And then um, I said um, the uh, pres- ex-President Nixon had just flown to China on a diplomatic mission, and the country okay. was all angry about it. And I said, why didn't Nixon go to China on a rickshaw driven by a mule? <laughs> Spiro Agnew could have used the exercise. <laughs> Boom! The place just exploded. So, you know, uh, Mitzi tells me to come back the next week, blah, 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 blah. Oh, he's terrific. So, huh? the next Sunday, I get all these calls from Oklahoma. The Orbit magazine had put these two jokes in, quoted me, oh. and all my fraternity brothers thought I'd made it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, yeah, back then being in the paper, though, or a magazine was a giant deal. Oh, look who's here. The great Rick Ingram well, two, uh, is here. Two months later. Mm-hmm. Rick Ingram. Slide How are Slide we're the book, in. We're the bookends on the first show. <laughs> all, right, all right, so let's let's get to the pussy talk. No <laughs> way. We already did it. We already time. did it. Oh. I showed mine yeah. and everything. How much, <laughs> now that's exciting. How much crypto were you sold today? <laughs> uh, listen, I stay happy away from... Happy talky, talky, happy talky. <laughs> listen, I, if it involves crypto, if Good. we can get Argus bucks out there, <laughs> I'll sell them. <laughs> I'll do what it takes. Um, how are things? Did you go up already? No, no. I'm I'm here for this show. You're just here for the show. Yeah. Isn't this Dang. exciting? Are we live? We've never been live. No, ever. we're not live. <laughs> but he was just saying how he got written up in Orbit Orbit magazine, and oh, his okay. friends thought he made it in Oklahoma because that was a big deal. That, I Wait, mean, that, that you, is exciting. It is. Do you remember Orbit magazine? No, I know, no. I it was a Sunday supplement in all the newspapers back in the '70s. Okay. I and mean, before that. And anyway, they had a reporter here my first Monday night. That's very funny. Quoted two jokes. And the fraternity brothers went nuts. This is this is like when Hinchcliffe was the golden boy of oh the Sunset Strip. Oh, my God. But didn't he write that? I, I mean, he at least provided the info. But oh, got it. Okay. I, I, it was a different time. Or it was time an in interview, a, right? Or something? Yeah, but I, I don't think he thought... Everyone would find out, but it's the internet, so someone Don't worry, Argus it. has uh, some Asian ladies that need him, and he's ignoring them. So we're going to make it a drinking game. Is that game a pager? Every time it goes off. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I've, I've, I've got to learn how to work the settings. All right. <laughs> you know? It happens. <laughs> you know, I've got a, I have an apartment manager who's a millennial that does it for me, but I'm he's not here. That's not bad. So funny. Uh, do you trust millennials? Yes, I love them. You I do abs- because they they are the they, they are the fruit of our loins. They are right off of they're just like us. They yeah. laugh at the same jokes. Um, oh, okay. They are great. I now, like that. Ge- I'm not sure about Generation Z though. You started just destroying in the last couple of years, and I feel like there's an aspect of it where you. Rick. He embraced. No, it's no, different. I kill. Oh, you mean it's different? No, no, it's, I, it's, it's, it's it is different. Level. Yeah. I, I tell my friends, I killed forever, and now I'm destroying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. It yeah. is, and it's it feels like it. It's almost as if you embraced. You're the the boomer villain. <laughs> and and you're, you call it the dark side. Yeah, and you and you la- like you really are enjoying being that. I like I like and that the boomer great. villain. Well, if you could write that but on the, the back truth of is, your jacket, you're, 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 great. you're labeling villain probably out of spite because <laughs> because the truth is the, oh, bo- the boomer villain is their id, okay, and the okay. id is that's who they really are, right? What yeah. the, the, the id? Oh, the id. The I got it. I got you. That's who they really you. are. Yeah. I'm sorry. I, didn't I can hear tell it. by the way they laugh at the cocaine jokes. Well, you know what? They tried to hide their love of cocaine for a long time. The millennials did they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they just did a lot of Adderall, and then they're oh, like, "Oh yeah, it's the, but they, it's they the got same some money." Thing. Yeah, it was, it was like it's the same thing. Eventually, you yeah. couldn't get the pills anymore, so you had to start doing the coke. actual coke. Uh-huh. It's just like all the people who overdose on heroin; they all yeah. start off taking pills, and then, and then can't get a prescription. Mm-hmm. Well, there's always some smack there's, down there's on the street There's always a corner. $5. You know, but I, I've never done any uh, jokes. I don't even do pot jokes. I don't even like to think about going down, you know? Yeah, why would Good you? Good for you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the low. I told you there's levels I, I said, to this. I said, you know, on pot, pot's, a cute, back. pot's a cute drug if you can't afford blow. That's exactly right. <laughs> I can't imagine that one does anything close to the other. No, they're very no, different. No, one vibes. goes down, one goes up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, so Crest Hill... 
Uh, what was the most cocaine you ever saw <laughs> while residing in that? Hold on, I got crystal questions too. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. Good. <laughs> I, I was actually, I wanted to go year by year. Got it. And, and I started when he got here in 76. Who well, got wait a the minute. most pussy and who got the best we pussy? We all know who got okay, the most we, pussy. Okay, we, we had a shoebox full of it one night. Pussy? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, it was the that 70s, was Eleanor. <laughs> <laughs> Just to pull out a shoebox. Yeah. yeah. A that shoebox of blow. Sense. And, <laughs> all right. And don't okay. let me bring up the first edition of the Girls of the Comedy Store. Oh, please. Do, do you, boo. I'm here for Gosh. it. I want to know all about it. It was the late 70s, and sex was simply fun. It That's was not a right. commitment, okay? Right. It was, it was calisthenic. Charges were not filed. Uh, right. <laughs> Such an idiot for being born in 81. Oh, man. What a pussy. Yeah. Well, it was it was like no fault divorce. It was just like we're we're all just having fun here, and that, yeah. that was the ground rules for L.A. and New York. That yeah. was basically that's what it really was in that era. Yeah. I'm sure there were serious people like your parents were coupling off in the Midwest, right. having decent lives. <laughs> Not L.A. and New York, right? You know, I think L- L- L.A. I think LA it's is still pretty much that way. L.A. Yeah. L.A. has eight million people in it. Four million were born here. The other four million were too good for their hometowns. Uh, yep, okay. that's exactly right. Yep. And find those, a better place, and that's that's where you're free. Well, it, I think it's funny because there's so much discussion about um, how everyone is woke and offended, and what I found from traveling around America is that they're not woke or offended anywhere other than Los Angeles that's or New York. Oh, you open for Chris Rock all over the place. Yeah, yeah everywhere, and li- people were literally great. The only places where people ever went, oh, yeah. out of. Cities all over the world were L.A. and New York. Before you got here, before you got here, we were talking. Before you got here, we were talking about Dice being the first victim of cancellation. You know, giant giant cancellation. He had the balls to stand up and stand behind it. And if you do that now in L.A., they will go. They will break. The woke breaks a lot easier than it bends. Oh, absolutely, it breaks easier. Like you found that out. Yeah, I mean, there it's. I call them the cyber left, but they're they're (laughs) only offended. Online, yeah, and then if it's like, well, what are you going to go do? And they're like, oh, but I tweeted, I thought that was it. Yeah, and you're like, oh, so you're not going to do anything? Okay, <laughs> but everyone's outraged on social but media. Do you have forty dollars to yeah. go see Rick Ingram? Well, no. Uh, <laughs> well, <then wow>. you're <laughs> gonna... <laughs> I'm saving up for rent. So I'm not even <laughs> right, saving right. up for a house anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's terrible, but yeah, no one cares anywhere. Like all, even in places like where I was like. People are like, yeah, I bet they're going to be tough in Seattle. Like, yeah. No. But do you find here at the store, people get offended? I, I feel like they don't. I feel no. like. I think. I think they know what they're coming into. When I, when I look out into the crowd and I'm That's being. That's a good point. When I'm, and I'm being a monster of some sort, I see like. Maybe one or two. I, I, I see 10. Oh, really? And it's always. Women and it's always. Why'd you look between, at me? They give you that look. It's that look. It's always between like twenty one and like thirty five, and there's a lot of this, <laughs> and then a lot of looking at the people they're with who are oh, who are laughing. Yeah. Okay. And um and then sometimes I'll just point at them. Mm-hmm. I won't even address them, but it makes them very uncomfortable if you point at I've, them. I've seen that only in one instance. Whenever I try a Taylor Swift joke. Hilarious. They clam up I and they get, look at their date like you better not laugh. How dare he? <laughs> I did get like a boo <laughs> the other night. <laughs> it's a perfectly good joke, too. I it's was a... totally shitting on her and they <laughs> oh, boo. And I just first of all, guys, uh, she sings beautiful songs about America. <laughs> He's a Kansas she, City Chiefs she fan. She dates piece just of shit. Uh, an all American football. <laughs> number eighty seven. <laughs> yep. Boyfriend and, number eighty seven. <laughs> oh nice. shit. Uh, see not I, even though it's not live, I could hear them booing yeah, yeah, yeah. from the future. <laughs> Look, she could sing she picked at, the wrong Kelsey, she could, I'll tell you that. She could my sing God. at my she could sing at my funeral and I would get up and leap. Wow. <laughs> now we're talking. Now we're talking. Hey, that's gonna get us the at I least really, the buzz. Oh really? really what are you gonna do? Cancel me? We're putting the disclaimer goes, back on. He yeah, goes, oh time. thank you. It's time. He Argus goes, what are you gonna do? Cancel my last two years? Damn. <laughs> That's ice cold. That's great. Still got it. <laughs> um, out of all of the guys from uh, the early generation that yeah. now exist only to complain about not getting stage time here online. Oh, yeah. Um, which ones were the biggest killers 
that and don't okay. get stage time. Yeah. Okay, anymore. now listen. Or maybe just don't even perform anymore. Okay, yeah. well, let, me, let me lay it out for you. Okay, you all know, but the viewers may not, that they established the Comedy Store in May of 72. Yeah. Okay, the same month and year that Johnny Carson moved his show to Los Angeles. Good timing. That moved all of the comics to Los Angeles. Yeah. And they were they'd been working the improv in New York and they all came out in mass. Okay. Yeah. And there were about four or five of them that were already really developed. Freddie Prinze, right. Steve Landsberg, Richard Lewis. Okay. Oh, okay. You ha- and then they were joined by uh, comics that developed here very quickly. This is before I got here. Uh, and Richard Ke- Lewis just retired, right? Yeah, I guess. In the last couple of years. Yeah, but, yeah. but Kelly Monteith was a killer. Wow. He wound up being a big host on, on British TV. Okay. okay. He, killer. A clean comic. Great guy from St. Louis. Just a, okay. ki- a killer comic. Uh, Steve Bluestein, Kip Adato was name. the first one oh, to yeah. go Kip to was Vegas. Great. Yeah. And uh, let's see, uh, Johnny Dark was started working oh, Las Johnny Vegas Dark. with Ginger great Rogers. Johnny. Tom yeah. Dreesen latched on with Sinatra. There were uh, Jay Leno and Letterman came came to town in 74. Okay. okay. Letterman got discouraged and uh, almost went home. Mitzi talked him out of it. Yep. And by the time I got here in 76, the comedy store was so established, even with just the original room in the Westwood, <clears throat> that you had three sitcoms that had come right out of the original room already. Welcome back, Cotter, Good Times, and Freddie Prinze's uh, 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 Chico sitcoms. and the Man. Chico and the Man. Yeah. Those three sitcoms had already come out of the Comedy Store original room when it was wow. a 135-seater. Dang. Okay. So I got That's here. Only in four summer. years. That's a powerful yeah, room. Yeah. So I got here well, because there was no other place. Right. The, the Horn in Santa Monica was professional, and the Improv in New York wasn't quite here yet. So down on Melrose. So I got here in '76 with a brand new, fresh pledge class that had just come out of college. We'd come out of the Watergate. All the people, all the people that wanted to be public figures, were disillusioned by politics. So we went into stand up. Yeah, and so people my my era either went into journalism or they went into stand up, and so we had this pledge class in '76 that came out at the same time. Mitzi made us all regulars and sent us over to Westwood. Michael Keaton, Robin uh, Williams, Michael Keaton, Bill Kirkenbauer, Bob Saget, Marsha Warfield, Sandra Bernhardt, Kirk, mm. Bill Kirkenbauer. That's the just the ten of us guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. He he was he was the hot guy before Robin got to town in September. He okay. was really, oh, really hot. <laughs> he was having a See great year. And then yeah, Robin yeah. showed up. <laughs> <laughs> How dare you? Oh, I'll take I the gym like teacher that. on a Kurt Cameron show. <laughs> <laughs> Let's do it. I smell spit off. Oh. Well, let me just say this. Run. He lives yeah. in Thailand now, so he okay. didn't oh, ever quite wow. got over it. <laughs> God bless him, huh? I feel yeah. like that happened a lot, though, because you, you feel like you're crushing, you're crushing. Yeah. Like Robin Williams. And, well, you know, well, like it, legends are just it, keep coming in, in for the, a while. In the three network era, you felt like there was more competition to get to the top because there were only three networks. Right. Yeah. But but the, I'm telling the viewers right now that it was such an organized, graduated sense of, of development back then because you, you showcased for Mitzi and showcased and showcased. She made you a regular. And in two or three years, you were ready for the talk shows. And if you sold out early, you would do the Mike Douglas, the Merv Griffin, the Dinah Shore wow. show. Or if you held out. I to- think Dinah Shore is going to sing again. <laughs> Who said that? Janice Hart. Oh, that that's, oh, her- oh, my God, that's right. <laughs> hey, oh, my I, God. Think Janice, I, I think Dinah Shore is going to sing again. It was one of her Bambi characters Oh, or something. But, but but she did she Dinah perfectly. Yeah. D- Janice Hart would do Dinah Shore one quarter note flat. I didn't even just know how, who it was. Just how I, Dinah I, sang. I knew it was good. <laughs> oh, it was hilarious. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, Janice would come along the next year. But there were uh, Charlie Hill, Ollie Joe Prater. Oh, uh, yeah. And uh, Mike Binder. Charlie oh. Hill, I, I, I wish we would have had. Charlie Hill on. Oh, listen. Oh, just, I would have killed uh, if, for if that. If we could have had Argus and Charlie Hill, so we had Argus telling stories and Charlie Hill just Fixing laughing. Fixing them? Here, here's <laughs> just laughing. That's I wish you'd I gotten here early the last two Saturday nights because it was about the 10th anniversary of Charlie dying. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so I talked about this statue of, in Philadelphia of Columbus yeah. that a judge just announced it must stay up. It says he discovered America. And I said, one night in 79, Charlie and I are walking down Beverly Boulevard, and we saw a Mercedes-Benz convertible parked with the key still in it. 
And Charlie said, hey, Argus, what a great looking car. Let's discover it. <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. joke is still oh, being used. Bam. Yeah. <laughs> God, he was so good. Unbelievable. He was brilliant. I, I was so terrified when Mitzi first sent me to La Jolla. She sent me with Charlie Hill. Really? I didn't yeah. know him. I'd never met him. And uh, One of the so greatest. First, Duncan called me. He's like, hey, great news, man. You're <laughs> heading down to San Diego for uh, Thanksgiving. I'm like, oh, Thanksgiving? Yeah. Oh, of course. And I'm like, great. <laughs> Charlie Hill? Yeah. <laughs> and I just thought that's so cool. And then <laughs> he didn't tell me anything else. Next thing I know, they're letting me know that I'm doing the Cowboys and Indian show. Yeah. <laughs> and, You're the Cowboy? And I'm the Cowboy. <laughs> and I'm like, I, so they called to tell me. I'm like, I go, well, what? But it's pilgrims and Indians. Yeah, am yeah, I, yeah. So am I the pilgrim? And they're like, no, Mitzi said Mitzi cowboy. said you're a cowboy. Mitzi, you're <laughs> a cowboy, okay. So I don't have to do anything? They're like, no, just have just fun. Just do your but show. Like, so, I, so then I'm looking up Charlie Hill, and I'm like, fuck, this guy, he's, he's done a ton of shit. Yeah. yeah. And then I'm like, How, this might suck. So I'm thinking I got to stay in the condo with him, and he showed up, and before the first shows and he's just like what room are you in I'm like obviously i'm in the shitty room <laughs> and he was like hey i like your attitude he went sat in came out he's like i can't do drugs anymore but if you do drugs or you smoke pot by all means I'm like, oh man all right, this might be all right <laughs> and then he was great the shows did great. you stay up late talking to him yeah we stayed wasn't up he wonderful all night we, oh, I, man. I i got super high and he would laugh and tell me about People who he, oh, and he, he watched get super and high. Charlie and remembered got super high with and Charlie and Harris Pete remembered everything. Oh, he was I mean, great. Everything impressive. Yeah, yeah. He was he was really funny. Alan Stephen remembered everything too. He does yeah. too. Yeah, yeah. I, that's why I had Alan on. But it's always angrier. Yeah. Well, here's it's the thing. It's an angry when, version with Alan. When I I, I always sit and I because he wasn't on pot. <laughs> I laugh so hard with Alan, and yeah. he tells the best stories. Yeah. So I bring him in, and then it, he turns it into these angry stories. And me and Rick were like, "Wait, that's not funny." What, <laughs> what I like about but Alan's it, so he, good. he started out talking about how great Roseanne was because the writers were all young, uh -huh. and yeah. they were all hungry, and they were just great killer comics. And then he turned it into how he can't get a job now. And all they want to do is hire these young guys. <laughs> and I'm like, and we were all like, oh, we're oh, like oh, wait, did we just uh, go full one, 180 or is this 360? Well, I don't well, even know how far we came. Well, you know, Alan, I, I, have so not, good. I have not watched you in a long time, but I hear you are so great at crowd work now. It brings to mind Alan. <laughs> oh, yeah, brilliant. Because I wonder, have you seen Alan work? <clears throat> I've only seen him once. I saw him go up on... I don't even know what kind of was. maybe if, it was if you ever have a chance, like in Vegas or birthday. something, to see him. Yeah, he can put he can put a crowd together yeah. and have everybody going at each other and having a wonderful time at it. it, it he really yeah, he, brings people together. When I was waiting tables, if Alan was like, I loved it. I was gonna say about you when we were waiting tables. Me, oh sorry. <laughs> It's a drinking game. That happens. <laughs> anyway. Every time Argus's lady chirps, we every, take a Every time I get a crypto offer from a beautiful Asian girl, ding, 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 ding. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <sighs> but so when me, Lauren, and Anna would always be waiting tables together, usually, and you would be on, and you had this joke about uh, Beverly Hills sobriety. Yeah. The stories. Yeah. Uh, by the night before, or, you know, their last, what is it called? Their rock bottom. The rock bottom. So in it, it was oh, yeah. me. I, I'm in a, a hot tub surrounded by, and he would always say either four, five, or six naked women. Yeah, it beautiful. always varied. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful. So me, Anna, and Lauren would be like, <laughs> and we would, and then we'd be like, and the audience had no idea what we're doing, but yeah. we're guessing your how many, bit. Uh, like, how many chicks are in Argus's hot tub tonight? <laughs> and Lauren would always, she would always make the no, most noise. And, and by like, the way, I got for, it. <laughs> for the viewer, the guy sitting in the hot tub in Bel Air. <laughs> he's gonna do the, he's gotta do the bit. Yeah. No, wait, like, what is it? Uh, wait a minute, and he's got a pound of a cocaine in one hand, <laughs> yeah. a quart of Louis the Thirteenth cognac That's in right. the other. Thanks to AA, I never have to live like this again. Yeah, That's right. yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Legendary. Come on, man. We're going over the hedges. Hilarious. <laughs> the Beverly Hills like, Jail. I literally knew oh, every word so of it. Funny. But like, and then Alan would go on, and it was just like, I don't know. He would make the room fun. You're right. Yeah. Like the audience, they would drink more. Like they would. I love this guy. Who's this guy? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, there was another one that they used to. Was it Kipadada? Maybe. 
Kip used to just do the, uh, he was doing the piano by the time. Uh, I got Jackie here Diamond him. was playing the piano for him. Like it was yeah. a, like he was an old fashioned right. uh, lounge comic, right? Or Mike Becker. How mm -hmm. many diamonds were there? Uh, Jackie, Di Jackie, Jackie Diamond was interesting. He was like a, a multi millionaire son, and he moved. I into, didn't know Jackie too much. J he, he he was nineteen twenty years old, and he moved into an old hotel. <laughs> the Ambassador Hotel, just before oh, they, wow. they, they uh, destroyed it, and so um, uh, Kip Adada had struck had, str had, had structurally too. a brilliant act. Yeah, he would he would come out and he would say, you know, whenever I go into a country western bar, I look around, and the man that I respect right away <laughs> is a man sitting at the bar with a scar indentation across his forehead, the exact size of a pool cue. <laughs> you want to know why? Because there's a man who knows what can happen. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, he was very like that. that very, oh, like, yeah, just boom. The and it, and it, the it would be like a lyric, you know? And he'd wear a right. suit, oh, he'd sipping kind of easily, on cognac. Nuts, yeah. 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 I know, I like, to, I like to go character. for a walk naked in, in the petting zoo <laughs> and sprinkle a little salt on my ass and put a little butter on it. My wait, God. wait a minute. Uh, he was uh, dark. Uh, he was I like dark. It. I love I like Let's it. cancel him. I like it. The deer likes it. <laughs> <laughs> wait a minute. Yeah, wait yeah, a minute. Yeah, yeah. Who's the victim here? <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, God, yeah, yeah. he was so brilliant. Ahead of he his time. He was so silly. Oh. Yeah. I, that, I, I enjoyed Kip. Yeah. Like, he, he was, was just one funny. Of my, he was funny. There would be the animal lights would go down. It was weird. Protesting yeah. that joke. Oh, oh, that's absolutely. right. Yeah. We need to make sure that no one buys tickets to this guy's show. <laughs> he made fun of Bambi. Yeah. How He's... dare he? Yeah, he, I, there was a lot. Like, when I first started, I'd be like, oh, wow. And um, Roger Bear would come out and sing. That would annoy me a little bit, but it made the audience that, that was, like that. He, he bought one of the cocaine jokes in that story about Mitchell. <laughs> uh, it was, uh, uh, they, they would do the uh, song switch I guess you say what can make me, me feel, feel this way. way. Cocaine, cocaine, <laughs> cocaine. Damn, Talking about really cocaine, <laughs> cocaine, cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> that's the joke that Mitchell sold, and Roger Bear did it for 10 years. <laughs> Hilarious. He was telling Mitchell Walters used to like walk in and sell, like figure out a good Coke joke and then sell it to somebody, then go through the hallway, go to this lady Debbie's house sold it and four buy times. Coke. He sold it four times so walking down the get... hall to the same, to different comics. Hey. Same joke. Hilarious. And then go buy it. And go buy a grandmother. Yeah, buy a Coke with and then I go, did he still do the joke? And Argus goes, no, he had integrity. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. No, they're going to look like sense. assholes for yeah. doing the same bit, but it still happens. It still happens, yes. Robin was interesting. He, when he got here in September of 76, he, was, he, he had decided to use just his first and middle name. He was Robin McLaurin. Whoa. Okay. Whoa. Isn't that weird? Yeah. He was Scottish. Episcopalians, all right. And his, 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 Half not bad. His his dad his dad was a uh, executive for General Motors. Okay. Okay. So he was from Bloomfield Hills, and he developed in San Francisco. Yeah. And he got to the comedy store, and he did four bits. But he he was he it's like he it was like he lived on the streets. It long fingernails. It was dirty. It was smelly. It, always cowboy rich kids. Hat. Always rich kids. It didn't go off. Oh. And anyway. <laughs> He would do. Uh, um, he would start off. He would walk on stage. And say, Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I would like to do a bit uh, from Shakespeare's *Midsummer Night's Wet Dream*. <laughs> Hark! The moon, like a testicle, hangs low in the sky. Not bad. <laughs> they would just bring down the house. I'm yeah. with him. <laughs> and then he would. It's from two gentlemen from Santa Monica, and he would do a Shakespeare switch. <laughs> oh God! <laughs> uh, yeah. On a on a gay Shakespeare. Then he would do cancel him. Then he would do Nadia Comaneci. Then he would do a country western with all the redneck jokes in it, and then uh, and he would everybody. end with oh, yeah. he, he would end with a. Uh, it's very inclusive. Yeah, it's inclusively mocking. That's what I think it's all about. <laughs> yeah. As you long as you bring them all in, it was the '70s, yeah. man. Everybody laughed at everything. I'm telling yeah. you, Argus, you can get away with it again. We're going full I'm, circle. I'm, We're going to yeah. do it. Yeah. It's, I got off stage the other night and I was like, man, I, I don't know if I should feel good about. Yeah, how I definitely well that went. Yeah. 
I started a race roller in the uh, OR a couple uh, nights ago. I was, was I was watching American Movie Classics the other night. They've got Blazing Saddles now out to 20 minutes. <laughs> 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 you know all the good Kansas City lines have been taken out. Yeah. 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 I don't know. That's a Taylor yeah. Swift. Yeah. I stand by was, those. Was, but the voiceover was an excellent commercial for Snickers. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I stand by those, Kansas City. <laughs> How dare you? How dare you? You were Kansas City, Kansas, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, Overland I, Park. I thought he was going to say yep. you're Kansas yep. City. Lenexo, Overland Park. Yeah, yeah, I worked for a cheerleading company. That out makes, of, that makes out sense. Of, or, huh? I said obviously. <laughs> yeah. Well, I I got to tour all over the country uh, in my soft freshman, sophomore, junior year, all over the country for this Kansas City. Uh, cheerleading outfit called International Cheerleading Foundation. Outfit. And they were the offices were in Grant Square in Overland Park. So Okay. okay. So but Overland. but I got to see I got to see all the Shawnee mission. Beverly Hills has nothing on Kansas City. Kansas I've, City, I've they've got mansions. It for years. It's, it's, no, they've got lawns. Wait a minute. They have lawns. It is pretty you're right. They have lawns in Kansas City. These yeah. mansions with big lawns. Yeah. And property's too them. valuable here for lawns. Not even the not even the mansions. Some of the duplexes have lawns. <laughs> yeah. Wait, hold on. They split the house in two and they both get lawns? This doesn't feel right. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, when you go Kansas back there, you go, man, it's gorgeous. Comfort, you, yeah. you see a vacant lot in Kansas City, you go, man. Oh, I guess when I think about what my townhouse com could get me if I sold it and moved to Kansas City. I'm like, the only thing Might holding me back houses. is Kansas City. Yeah. <laughs> it's and a, winter. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. It's a, it's all the elements. I don't yeah. want summer yeah. either. Too no, hot, right, humid, right. 105. Yeah. Remember mosquitoes? Oh, yeah. <laughs> all of that. So, you know, you just do what you got to do. Don't hate me, but I got to go open the OR. So you yep. continue. I'll be back. Don't drink all my water. I'll be we'll, back for we'll the drink drinking game. I'm gonna, can we keep going? Gonna or do we, out yeah, how... Eleanor's going to crush that. Um, yeah. Eleanor, you got this. Mitzi believes in you. Mitzi settings. Pen. Okay. <laughs> Notification sounds. Ah, here it is. Here it is. Notifications. There we go. Now it's off. You can. I've saved you from alcoholism. <laughs> Are you good with the technology? I know you. you no. You tw do you tweet yourself, or do you have someone doing that for you? I can. I can Facebook. I can Facebook message, I can text, and then I can uh, delegate. Okay. You can tell someone to post can, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I've got a videographer that knows how to do that. Right, because I've seen some of the videos. I'm like, is Argus bringing in no, his no. camera set up and editing <laughs> no. himself? And, no, no. Because I can't do any of it. But. Well, I wondered about you because you could have, you yourself, you could have gotten in on a podcast thing 10 years ago. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, you could have, you really could. It, it was way. What's it? Now? Hold on, a, a, another child has been kidnapped. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was gonna say, are we make sure it's not. Now? Make sure it's not your child, okay? Yep, so <laughs> What's it like uh, having kids be, be, be responsible, man? It's the worst, really. I mean, it's it's great sometimes, and then other times, I'm like, I was so good at being selfish. Yeah. Um. How old are your kids now? I have a seven-year-old and a three-and-a-half-year-old. So the three-and-a-half-year-old is now just getting self-will, right? Yeah, I mean, he's he's pretty uh, out there in terms of, like, he's really smart already and really stubborn, so. Well, my dry cleaner at Holloway on Santa Monica Boulevard near La Cienega, they had a three-year-old named Anuska, and she was able to go on that, uh, what do you call it, that tablet? Oh, yeah, the iPad? Yeah, the iPad. Yeah. And order things. Yeah. And this and she, happens regularly. Yeah, and, I... and she from India, so she even cracked her parents' uh, password. Nice. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Three. Advanced, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I All, like that. Already setting the curve in math class. Man. But, but, but they, they got to do it. Are, are they technically into that stuff already? Oh, yeah. that's And that's what they want. That's their reward that they want for stuff. Like, well, we'll be really good, but. Can we have an hour of screen time? And you're like, eh, whatever. And they watch cartoons. Yeah, they watch they watch cartoons and um, play games, stuff like that. And then you put it up, you yeah, out of the reach. Yeah, take it, and you say, sorry, you can't play anymore. They pull that. They pull it. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's full on addiction. We were talking to one of my, my daughter today, and just like, uh, you're too addicted. If this is how upset you are about like, well, I have to do my homework tonight, so now I can't do screen time. And you're like. 
yeah, that's how it goes during the school year. I was like, I would do anything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, like, no. For screen time? <laughs> like, I would give up going to every holiday party for the rest of of my school years. I'm like, wow, that's a lot of holiday parties just for screen time. Right oh, now. no. This is I think we're saving her a chair. <laughs> yeah, man. They're, they're all hooked down. Like, yeah. I remember when... Before I had kids, seeing like all my friends with kids and the nephews and stuff, where I'm just like, these kids are so addicted. And then once I had them, I'm like, just give them the thing. I don't want to, I don't want to hear the complaints about toys aren't good enough anymore. They're not as fun. Yeah. Cause the toy just sits there. But on the game, you can just play a game about a toy and the toy runs around and jumps up. And do they get, is, do they get the endorphin release? It's yeah. about the same. Yeah. That's what it's all about. So, um, yeah, they're, they're loving it. If I would have done it, if I when I was a kid, I mean, we still had free reign back yeah. then. So <laughs> we were still in that era where it's just like I just stop talking. I don't want to hear you kids anymore. Yeah. So go outside and enjoy the world. We just play baseball or we'd play football, depending yeah. on what, what season it was. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. And neighborhood kids, and then you know we had friends and other. You had three guys you could play hot box, you know? Yeah. You know, that's all you needed. We'd play 500 a lot, yeah. which was just one guy throwing the pop fly and the other two guys basically wrestling yeah, yeah. and trying to catch yeah. it. And There are so many ways to entertain yourself, but, you know. Yeah, I do a joke now, uh, making fun of Generation Z. It's like a one-two thing. First of all, Generation Z believes that if you uh, press the gas pedal with your right foot, at the same time you press the brake pedal with your left foot, your car will take a screenshot. <laughs> okay. Nice. Now, but, but I'm telling you the difference. We baby boomers did not have play days like you kids had. Our parents bought World War II. They used to lock us outside until it was dark. And then the weakest among us ended up on unsolved mysteries. Yep. <laughs> and, and my parents... Are boomers, yeah. and we were raised the same way because you were raised right, and then you raised us right. But yeah, that's the same thing. It's just like they've got this video crack now. <laughs> it is, but the lack of missing children is really going to hurt society because <laughs> these kids are now going to be out there procreating instead of you know the missing link <laughs> taking out the weakest link. All right. It's not fair. We can tag it. Anytime I get here on Solved Mysteries, I get excited. My favorite show when I was a kid. My mom would be like, are you watching Unsolved Mysteries? I'd be like, I love this show. And then I would watch like two hours of it, and then I would just lay in bed at night like, this yeah. is not good. The world is not good. I'm either going to be kidnapped or possibly abducted by aliens. But either way, Robert Stack is going to be talking about me. And now they have now they have a new Unsolved Mysteries, but Robert Stack's been dead for so long that yeah. there's no creepiness to it. Well, I always loved Robert Stack. He was because great. He, he was the only man in show business allowed to be in the Los Angeles Country Club. That's because his father was a member. Uh, he was a big advertising uh, magnate in downtown Los Angeles, and Robert was raised there. Wow. And yeah. What What do you got to do to get in over there? What's the you the have secret to society? You have to three three things. You have to have. Uh, I think it's like maybe ten million dollars. Okay. Okay. Uh, a, a copy of your Episcopal confirmation certificate. Wow. All right. And then proof positive that you've never had an actor in your family. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, you got to really show them the tree. Look, these trees, they stay out of this industry. Wow. I like that. But I'm an elitist. So any, any way you can really feel better than anyone I support. Exactly. That's well, what it's always well, about. These are two Anglo-Saxons talking, so <laughs> trust me. <laughs> and we're just going to call we, this the canceled. We get what we're saying in between the lines. <laughs> you know, the nicest thing we can say about someone is he's one of us. <laughs> that is the nicest thing, probably. <laughs> um, now, what... You still write for the papers? Was that what you and Ellen were talking about? Well, I mean, is that still a thing? Yeah, it, there's the newspapers that are still around. Uh, they a lot of newspapers take my column. It's thirteen jokes a day, five days a week. Okay, three sentence jokes, premise, setup, punchline. Right, um, thirteen of them a day, and um, you know, 
I, I make sure they have my picture next to the column because I am in show business. Yeah. And then in the meantime, uh, we're putting together a, a replay of Argus Hamilton's Comedy Store tonight. And uh, line, got the producer lined up and the agents lined up. We're going to pitch it to Fox. Okay. Because there's a hole there. Right. All the other. The Arsenio spot that yeah, never got filled. Well, the funny thing you should mention that. In April of 88, I was, uh, I was a year and a half sober. And uh, I went over and did that show right after Arsenio left because they had a fallout or something. And I didn't think Johnny would mind. So I went over and did the show. That's when you, you absolutely destroy. Yeah. And um, the next thing I knew, they had a limo waiting for me outside my apartment on Palm Avenue to take me in to, for talks. They wanted to replace me and have me host a show. Okay. And um, it, it, it everything went great. We had a practice uh, show, Pat, just absolutely murdered. And at the last second, the CEO of, of the network... He's a big, big New York money guy now, too, but I'll think of his name in a minute. He said, no, I don't think we'll go with Argus. He reminds me too much of Johnny. Wow. What a compliment insult. Yeah, because why would he want somebody that could hold a show for 30 years? Yeah, that's not what you're looking for. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, wow. What'd they end up doing? They ended up rotating hosts. They got a guy out of the Pacific Northwest, and then it just petered out. Yeah, I don't remember anything. Yeah, I think it was on. Uh, uh, Ar Arsenio went over to Paramount. That's yeah. what happened, and he left Fox behind. Oh, I see. Arsenio, Arsenio was so smart, and so here's Arsenio. In gratitude for the studio audiences that would show up at each and every one of his tapings for his talk show, he had a food spread for him after the show. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's definitely a, that's not something a, that you get most of the time. Yeah. Yeah, that is, because some of those crowds have to sit in those shows for hours. I remember going <laughs> like a couple tapings when I first moved to L.A., and I was like, well, I should at least see how this goes since I'll probably be on pretty soon. And then, <laughs> um, but, yeah, I just remember being like, oh, I sat there for three hours. And well, before you got here, um, game shows had live audiences, okay? All right, And there were maybe... 10 or 12 of them on the air at the time during the three network era from about, you know, the late seventies up to 1990. Right. And man, it was a good paying gig to warm up the crowd. Okay. Because they would pay you $800 to come in and just warm up a crowd in the afternoon yeah. before the taping. And then you come to the comedy store that night. Right. And one guy got good at it. <clears throat> it was our piano player over at the comedy store Westwood named Stevie Moore. Oh yeah. I, I know him from, <clears throat> Jeff Scott telling me stories and yeah, um, Stevie Moore. <clears throat> Stevie Moore was gay, and uh, Lois Bromfield was lesbian. She was from Canada, so Mitzi arranged for them to get married. Okay, for Lois's citizenship, okay. and then Mitzi purchased a house below Sunset on Doheny. So Peter and Polly could go That's to right, Beverly that was Hills the High School. The house. High school, right? And they had Lois and Steve move in there. She had as their nice guardians. couple. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve Moore would just have have you in stitches talking about being Polly's guardian when he was. A, <laughs> and so, and so, so, so there was some. Roseanne kind of missed all this, okay? She was pretty much into her own thing at the time, while Stevie was becoming a monster with these warm-ups, okay? Right. And two things happened. First of all, Stevie got his first gig on the road at a redneck club up in San Jose, okay? Right. I mean, longshoreman kind of, you know. Yeah. Okay. And and he went up, he was so excited to go up for his first show, and he was a bit queensy, you know, but yeah. nevertheless. Heading to the Bay Area. Yeah. 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 But he was, at, he, he, there was no mistaking his energy on stage, okay? <laughs> All right. Well, he didn't know it, but Lois decided to surprise him and flew up to watch him. Lois just adored him, you know? Okay. And Lois would sit, sat in the back of the room. He didn't know she, she was there. And he walked out the first night and he said, hi, I'm Stevie Moore. And this is the Stevie Moore Variety Show. I'm from the South. Anybody else here from the South? And a guy in the back yelled, on your knees, faggot. And Stevie goes, Okay, anybody here from the north? <laughs> <laughs> and Lois 
almost just died. You just start pounding oh, on the wow. floor. Isn't that wonderful? Great comeback. Great. Yeah. And so now I'm leading up to a point, okay, because Roseanne doesn't know about this yet, okay? Right. And Roseanne uh, marries uh, the crazy middle act from Iowa. Uh, Tom was, Arnold. Tom Arnold, yeah. okay? And. The, the middle act. <laughs> there's never been. There's never been a, a harsher slander stated. Well, he on. used to. He used to. He used to eat animals on stage in Iowa. You yeah. heard about that? Uh, yeah. Okay. So you know. You weren't wrong. It just felt very seen. <laughs> All right. Now, there's a PETA yeah. <laughs> this target. So anyway, Roseanne and Tom need an opening act at, at the uh, at the Vegas International Hilton, I guess, where Elvis used to play off the strip. And 1,500 seat showroom, and it's all going to be perfect. They get Stevie Moore to open, then Tom Arnold's going to kill, and then Roseanne's coming up. He's going to middle act it like his whole yeah, career. Right. Well, Stevie Moore comes out, and he buries both of them. Yeah, <laughs> they can't follow Stevie Moore. Yeah, <laughs> he just absolutely destroys from all this work he had done warming up studio audiences. They just go wild for him. Tom eats it. Roseanne eats it. They fire Stevie on day three. <laughs> Nice. I did a three-night Las Vegas gig about 10 years ago, and it was like a road comic uh, for both the feature and the headlining thing. Yeah. And they just asked me, like, last second, like, hey, our guy, our opener, can you come do it? So I did it, and it was like at a... I can't think of what the casino is off the street. The Palms? I think it was at yeah, the Palms. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so uh, I went and I did it, and it was great. I'd just been at the in the OR in the main room right. doing spots, and so I went up, and the crowd was great. I was doing crowd work and just crushing, and then these two dudes were just eating shit. <laughs> and then they came up to me after the first night, and they were like, hey, so we're thinking about having you guys switch. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, all right. And then that guy came back and he said, yeah, I talked to them. They were kind of insulted. So I guess we're just going to do this again each night. And I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. So then each night I just go out. And the crowd was like super young. And I, I was probably 30, maybe 32 or something yeah. at the time. But they were close to my age and just loving it. Yeah. And then these guys would go up and it's like definitely, a, you know, a, oh, this is my dad kind of vibe yeah. where they're just like oh this isn't as fun and these dudes just ate it and the last night the headlining guy was like well I was, I'd say hopefully I'll work with you again but honestly I hope I never work with you again. <laughs> <laughs> I was like yeah, fair enough <laughs> but, but, nice to meet you I guess it was the hotel that paid you right yeah I still got paid yeah, so right. <laughs> it was it was all good and again my sets were all fine I just I thought it was funny like the I had never had someone to be like, no, I, my pride is more important. Yeah, yeah. I was just like, oh, okay. Well, I, I think if you'd work road clubs, that would have happened to you all the time at that level because you got yeah. you got good really fast. Yeah. Well, I, I slowly stopped getting feature work. Yeah. And the money never got better, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Once we started mm -hmm. making more money here, I'm like, yeah. I can make the same amount of money and not leave L.A. than yeah. feature. And How often do you do go out and do any road stuff? Not that often. A few times a year when I'm not with okay. Chris or Dave. Or well, I was going to ask you if because Alan Stephen just thrived on this. So I just wondered, in your case, well, if there's extra pressure, if you're headlining the show, if there's extra pressure, wondering how good the crowd work's going to go tonight. You no, no, I never think about it at all. You don't. No, I just, I just know that it'll be fun no okay, matter but, what. But you have enough solid material anyway that's going to murder. Yeah. Uh, so uh, so the crowd work is just ice cream. Yeah, I mean, it, I'm if I if I'm headlining and I'm doing 45 to an hour whatever they want, then I'll do I'll probably do 30 minutes of crowd work yeah. and then 20 to 30 minutes of Material. bits and pretend crowd work and Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you know, pulling pretend rabbits out of the hat <laughs> yeah. and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um yeah, and it goes great. I, I did um, Edmonton recently, I guess the beginning of December, and uh, it was a bunch of Christmas parties. Yeah. And so the, it, Edmonton has the largest mall in North America, and it's like the bigger version of the Mall of America. Right. Oh, and, my God. And like they have a full 
wave pool, like a uh, water slide park inside. They have yeah. a gun range and they have a comedy club. Uh-huh. So uh, to Rick Bronson's comic strip yeah. is the, who owns the club and um, crowds are amazing. It's the Texas, actually they said it was the Oklahoma of Canada and then someone said, no, we're Texas. Yeah, it's the oil. I've got but, fraternity brothers who made a lot of money in the oil up there. Yeah, yeah. And so they're they're super, they're conservative <laughs> Canadians, which is hilarious. Yeah. So They're I not Trudeau people. <laughs> no, it, I, I would say his name just like, I don't know if, if you guys are as big a Trudeau fans as I am. And then they would all start <laughs> booing me. Yeah. And they're like, I knew it. I knew it. Um, but yeah, they were... I kept trying to offend him. I go, man. That no. goes back to England versus Joan of Arc. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. But I love that they really have pride in their Englishness in yeah. Canada. Yeah. Just because they hate the French Canadians exactly. so much. <laughs> it's such a beautiful thing. Um, well, um, do you have anything you want to promote? Is there any, any uh, your website, your social media? I have media? a website, but I don't know how to promote it. All right. Um, <laughs> it's, it's, uh, <laughs> I like, listen, I'm, I'm bad at it. I, I would just tell people to go to my MySpace still. So <laughs> um, catch me and Dane Cook on uh, MySpace comedy. No, uh, here's what I'd like uh, our viewers to know. And that is if you can make it to the comedy store, okay, call ahead or, or go on the website. Mm-hmm. Buy the tickets well ahead of time. Get here early. Bring friends, bring loved ones, but get here early for the great seats. Because right now, uh, Rick and I will tell you, we've been th- here through thick and thin. Yeah. Thanks to website ticket sales and millennial crowds, we are sold out all the time. Yeah. And we're having the best time the comedy stores ever had. And kids, I was here in the late 70s and, and 80s when it was booming. This is booming 2.0. And it is there's nothing like it right now. Uh, yeah, I thought I thought that comedy would would lose its mustard after COVID, but it came back stronger than ever. It was great. Do you, do you remember when we would come back? The, everybody's sitting spaced out, spaced out, and, and, stuff, yeah. and they're laughing their asses off, and we're going, "My God, the main room when it's half full, it's, it's like La Jolla, man." It's I great. felt so good. Yeah, yeah, and then it eliminated. There's. Tickets were a little more expensive, and so there was no one here who just came because their friends wanted to go out. It was people who wanted to come laugh, Mm -hmm. and people go, your comedy seems to be doing better after COVID. Did you change? I said, no, everyone else did. I'm still a bitter, angry piece of shit, but now everyone else on earth understands so is everyone else. So, <laughs> like, people have a terrible attitude, and they're like, yeah, everything sucks. This is the right way to look at things. So, Well, that that's how you and I are bookends, because I convince them that they're better than everybody, and, and we're the perfect yin yeah. and yang. Yeah, because I, I go in there and just let them know that they are absolute trash. <laughs> Argus misled all of you. Yeah. <laughs> so, Argus, I'm going to tell them next time we're on the same show. Argus lied to you guys earlier. It's like, you it's felt like, good about yourself. It's like, it's like Nixon staring at, at Jack Kennedy's portrait on the White House walls. It's, you're who they wish they are. I'm who they are. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. They, they are fucking Nixon. But hey, you know, America's America. No apologies. But it, the important thing is for our viewers is when you, any chance you have of coming to Los Angeles, don't miss the comedy store mm-hmm. because, you know, you can take all the pictures outside. You can hang out at the outside bar, you yeah. can, your choice of showrooms. But, but don't miss the experience because it's like no other place in America. There's a family feel to it. You can feel it between us right now. Yeah. There's a family feel to this place that no other comedy club have. Every other comedy club, great shows, great comedians, yeah. but it tends to be, you know, a, a roll of gypsies coming in and off the road. <laughs> yeah. And here you've got family and it's still, the comedy store is the toughest club in the world to become a regular performer at. It, it, the, it, the improv just started giving me spots this over the last year for yeah. the first time in 20 years. And when people say, do you like the improv as much? I say, I, I like performing there now. But one time when I went there, I, I stood around and had no one to talk to. And it was so bad that Sebastian Maniscalco was looking around and decided that he should come talk to me. 
<laughs> and he's like, you perform here? And I go, no, not really. And he's like, yeah, there's no one to talk to. I'm like, yeah, we've known each other for five years at the comedy store, and you have never spoken to me That's once right. in those years. <laughs> yeah. But at the improv, he was like, I guess he's I like got to talk to Keller, you know, yeah. He's like, <laughs> yeah. He's like, I guess, I guess it's Ingram or nothing. So yeah. <laughs> we already made eye contact, I guess. Oh. And and when I got here, uh, the bartender's there was the future president of CBS. Yeah, that's right. And uh, and um, uh, who's the guy that's got uh, Alzheimer's now? Bruce Willis. Oh yeah. <laughs> who's the guy that got Alzheimer's? Well, about, me. Uh, could be a lot. <laughs> what's the old? What's his name? Who can't remember anything? <laughs> um, yeah. But they were Bruce. bartenders there. Dang. Yeah. Bruce Willis, huh? Yeah. I heard some great stories about Bruce Willis and. Um, and Alan Thick, how they were basically up for the same parts, and they were trying to Les, figure out... Les Moonvis was the other guy. Oh, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Um, but they were trying to figure out where to fit them in to their sitcoms they had, and they were they wanted to do Bruce Willis on Growing Pains and Alan Thick on Moonlighting. <laughs> and then someone came in and was like, you guys should really consider switching those around. <laughs> but now I just really want to see one episode of Growing Pains with Bruce Willis <laughs> and at least one episode of, of Moonlighting with Alan Thick just crushing that part. Alan Thick at that time had the Johnny Carson show of Canada up right. in Vancouver. And they would fly us up there, okay? And... Many of us were not in any shape to fly up to Vancouver at that time. Right. And luckily, one time I, I'd he, lost my wallet or the dealer had it or something. Yeah. And it all I have for identification is a Los Angeles Times Sunday calendar section article about me not for bad. identification to get into Canada. Okay. So, <laughs> different so, times. So I get off. The, I'm about to do the Alan Thick show. I, I, I'm up all night. I, I walk it through Canadians' custom. I show them this. And they kind of look. And, and then I seal my fate when I ask the Mountie. If, uh, where I should score some blow in Vancouver. Smart, <laughs> smart move. Oh, I oh, love well. that we're still talking about blow. <laughs> no, no. We're just wrapping it up, Al, but I, oh, and then I brought up Alan and Thick, and, so. <laughs> and so they, <laughs> so they called it. So when you did the Alan Thick show, you also had a weekend at this fantastic club in Vancouver. Okay. And the Gaslight District or something, whatever okay. they call it. Yeah, and then, it's all the same so, to us. So the Mounties called the club manager who came and claimed me and, we ended wow. up having a good time. Nice. I like that they they're like it's Canada, so we're going to give yeah. you another chance. <laughs> yeah, you said well they did. <laughs> yeah. You're you American, can behave this so, time, yeah. Maddie. <laughs> and you promise you're not going to do any cocaine uh, while you're here, eh? Yeah. And, okay, Absolutely. So I did. I had three one hundred dollar bills on me. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so this man so came I get the, I get the get cab to driver to take me around to where the hookers are in the district, and I give three different hookers a hundred dollar bill to please go get me a gram and bring me bring it back to me at the Inn and Denman Place in downtown Vancouver. Oh wow. And none of, none of them showed up. Wow. I was going to say, you gave it to three because you're hoping you get one. This is before debit cards, man. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I detoxed there for all weekend. Wow. <laughs> it had a happy ending. All for Alan Thick. Yeah. That's impressive. Man. I like that they didn't show up. That is, that mm. I do love I mean, those women. I did the show with Dale Shannon. <laughs> okay. Who did the theme song for Crime Story. Oh, wow. Well, run away. Oh, run, run, circle. run, run, we run away. Did yeah. you ever see Crime Story? Is that the Dice show? Yeah, I never yeah, saw yeah, it. Yeah. Like pre. Yeah. I, I, Soprano. It's yeah. great. I'm watching DVDs now. That's so funny. That's great. I love it. DVD. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have to find it. How'd, I'm going to have to order it. How'd it go for you upstairs? They were great. I haven't opened in a long time. Oh, that's great. I haven't opened in a long time. And it was, oh, I know they is have. Is that Dennis Farina? Yeah. yeah. yeah he, he was an actual Chicago detective. I remember yeah. that. Yeah. Because he was in all the Guy Ritchie movies. <laughs> he was movies close, or very close to Tom Dreesen. I think it, they say it's a lot closer to like Casino. The movie, like uh, uh, the players and what yeah. was going on with the Vegas stuff. But uh, yeah, the um, that's great. Tony Dennison is sensational as the cook, cast, and he has so a good. It, and I was telling him, Mike that, Haggerty, <laughs> legend. But the guy who plays Paulie steals every every show. Oh, uh, the fat little guy. Uh, yeah, that's, that's that's the mobster's assistant. He's so funny. I can't think. of, Wait, which one? John, John Santucci. Yes, yes, yes. I could see his face, but I still I still can't find him on there. But I was telling him that Andrew said um, that when they canceled that he was begging Michael Mann, please, please, yeah. It, I, I, he was, please, please, I'm going to be huge. Don't cancel it. And, and they were like, yeah, whatever, kid. You know what I like about <laughs> this show, if you look at this? 
It's the amount of men on that cast. You know what I mean? Yeah. They weren't worried about <laughs> <laughs> trying to get the ladies Poor. to feel equal. Poor Darlene or whatever that name is. Darlene. How do you say that? Darlene Flugel. Oh, Darlene. Darlene. Yeah. Darlene yeah. Flugel. Flugel. Yeah. And then Joe Han. What the fuck? What do they spell names like the that? Brunette the, the, the brunette on the lower left Legend. side. She's really yeah. good looking. Patricia. Patricia. Yeah, yeah, Charbonneau. 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 She's oh, yeah, beautiful yeah. Oh, on the yeah, show. Oh, yeah, she's pretty. Uh, that but must that, be her. That's her young. 10 years yeah, later. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I got to check it out. Um, has the phone gone off? Was there a lot more drinking? I see you're empty, I, Rick. I, I, Eleanor, he figured it out. I figured it out. No. He turned yes, it down. I went to notifications and, and, and subtracted. I've just been drinking on what I assume <laughs> the timing of each <laughs> notification would have been. <laughs> Didn't hear from one crypto girl <laughs> either. Um, so yeah, come to the comedy store though. Please. Eleanor, do you have stuff you want to promote? You have promote? to check out Argus. You have to come see Argus. He, he is destroying yes. the. We, the building is rocking right now. It's true. When you Argus is the on roof stage. off it? Is that what it is? I love doing it. It's, 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 it's on. Like, Who's on? They're like, Argus. I'm like, that son of a bitch. <laughs> it's all, it, we're honoring. I'm honoring Mitzi up there. That's great. She's the one that stuck with me. Yeah. She could have let me go. And, uh, and then I would have been Bud's a, problem. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you think Bud would have stuck by you? Yeah. Okay, Bud and I used to chase girls up and down La Cienega. And nobody knew it. Yes. I used to go. Over Talk there. about playing for the dark side. No, no, no. <laughs> no, what, what happened was, uh, it, this was before the strike, and the comedy store Westwood, I swear, on weekends with Jimmy Walker and Freddie Prince, we would be, we'd, ha we'd have 150 people couldn't get in either show. It was a 235 people first show, 235 people second show, have wow. 150 people. I'd call the improv and say, you guys need some customers? And I'd go out and I'd tell everybody, go to the improv, give them directions to Melrose, and everybody got along, and then the strike came, of course. Yeah. Right. And yeah, then we came south in North Korea. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, we're um, North Korea. We're North, right? <laughs> yeah. We're definitely North. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> you gotta have commitment. That's funny, Argus. <laughs> he's, he's I, got, drive, I ride the unicorn. Not yeah. I. <laughs> no, no democracy around here. <laughs> no. But I remember we used to do that. We would honor Laugh Factory tickets if they were oversold, or they would out honor comedy store tickets if oh, we were over really yeah when i when i was in the 90s well that makes sense because jamie who owns the laugh factory he here. he was a uh a, a doorman and mc at westwood isn't right, that funny right, him being a west i mean an mc yeah he, he uh it's funny he, he could introduce well. Him. He wasn't really funny. He but could introduce well. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's an art form. Yeah. I'll tell you, one of the best introducers out there. That guy was there. cordial. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll say this about him. <laughs> <laughs> Frazier, at one point, Frazier Smith. Stevie was, Moore buried him. In there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the great yeah. Steve yeah. Moore. I Did you him, ever meet him? I told him two stories. Jeff Scott told me stories. So, um, My favorite. Uh, at one point... They wanted to start Laugh Factory Management, and Fraser Smith was like, "Hey, Rick, <laughs> buddy, I I recommended you, man." And I'm like, "Oh, well, can they get me spots at the Laugh Factory?" And he's like, "I hope so." <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I go down there and I meet with this guy named Dwight something, and Jamie's there, and I go and I sit down. And I'm just like waiting for their pitch. And I'm like, "So, <laughs> are you guys gonna like send me out for things?" And then Jamie's like. Dwight, if you like white trash guys, I know this other guy who is also going to be very good. And I'm sitting there like, these, these are my managers? And they're like, can I start getting spots here? And I'm trying to just like bite the bullet and just yeah, like yeah. let this dude insult me. And then he's like, well, we will see what happens. And I'm like, we'll see what happens. Why, why would I? <laughs> who, who, when on earth did you project yourself as white trash? When? No, uh, but he wanted him to. I, I think Jamie just decided that's what I was. was that that ended him, didn't he? Yeah. It? And then I was like, well, I'm just not going to try and come to the laugh out. <clears throat> he so. wanted him to like wear a hat. Didn't he want you to wear like a baseball hat and, or? Uh, wear a uh, sideways baseball hat. <laughs> I'm sorry. Should be just I'll fall. like a. Uh, he you was look, trying to do the character thing like Mitzi would do to people. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Did you tell him who switched governments in Iran in 1953 just because we felt like it? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't tell him, but if I see him now, I will. Hey, okay, please do. Yeah. <laughs> you owe him one. Yeah, I'll let him know. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. Oh, okay, I, I didn't like that at all. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. And I was more insulted, like, hold on. So not only do you think I'm white trash, but I'm not enough of a white trash <laughs> client that you're going to go with just me. Yeah, it's bullshit. You're bringing in some other guy, too? <laughs> Fuck this guy. Who <laughs> needs your club, man? I only come down here because Greenblatt's is next door. What's he, Fuck he's, you. Like he's doing your act, man. Yeah. <laughs> this guy's roasting me. <laughs> he, he made me drive all the way yeah, to a yeah, meeting yeah. just to fucking insult me to my face. I, I give him credit for that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> give him credit go, for Jamie. that. <laughs> it's like performing Hilarious. at Disneyland, but at least he did insult me in a dark room upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, oh, um, so come to the comedy that. store. Do not go to the Laugh Factory, uh, period. Yeah. <laughs> go Those days are track. over. If you want to see me, you come to the comedy That's store. That's exactly right. And you if want you want to see me, you come here and or possibly one or two comedy clubs every five years. Now, here's the deal. <laughs> Rick and I are generally bookending on the first show in the main room on yeah. Fridays and Saturdays. You catch Eleanor generally I'm, on the second show. Yeah. And if I'm in filthy town. Filthy she's in town. It was hard to open. I got to be honest. I bit my tongue like seven times up there. I was probably bleeding. They get so mad if you say cunt right away. I know. <laughs> For years, Argus, uh, we were all told that we absolutely can't be dirty at the beginning of the if show. If we were bringing up Argus. And if, if you are and Argus sees it. We're in trouble. Mitzi is going to find out about that's it. That's horse. No. And that's what Tommy led us to believe uh, for years. Tommy's using me to do yeah. his agenda. Argus right. went yeah. to Mitzi. Yeah. yeah. And I'd be like, <laughs> and I would go, but I, I was on at 945. Why does it matter? Well, he stuck around. Uh, <laughs> he heard your son. He and he said it was too dirty, too early. <laughs> no, I, Tommy that. didn't give me opening spots for like... Five years, because I I cursed a couple times and bringing you up, or not bringing you up, but like in front. Who of you. saw this? Because it had to be him. It, was it had him. to be him. Because listen, the reason I still have friends is that I not only kept quiet about Same. everything. I never say anything. I lied to her, uh, make everybody look good. <laughs> Smart. Argus, I'm with you. I got blamed for telling. They said I would tell Mitzi everything. I wouldn't tell Mitzi a thing. It always backfired. Yeah, always. It was usually the cover booth person. Tommy. No, that well, was Tommy most of the that's time. That's usually what, well, yeah. Yeah, he just would play everyone because he'd do it with Mitzi. And he'd be like, well, Mitzi said not to give you spots for three weeks. And then Brian Holtzman would be like, I went to Mitzi's today. <laughs> she can't talk at all. <laughs> he did. Tommy like, he oh. did. That was the best. Oh. Oh. What, what, how was she speaking to you? Was it telekinesis? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it was like the ultimate, like, oh, I didn't know that you went over there. And saw yeah. <laughs> that was me and Holtzman at her house. Yeah, he was so mad. Speak. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was a good time. And of course, all of us were just like, Holtzman, he might kill the talent coordinator. <laughs> we might see a murder. <laughs> Is this like in early 2021? Um, 2011? Would, yeah, 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 it would have been right around just then. Just when she lost focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, he, and, and that day, I'll be honest, like that day, she was just looking, she wasn't speaking, and Alfred had her, you know, Alfred yeah. was so good with her. Yeah, her, 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 her Filipino caretaker. Yeah, we told her he was Thai, but anyway. Sawadi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Sawadika. And uh, so anyway, she, she he had her, uh, she, was, she looked okay, but she wasn't speaking, and Alfred was like saying, oh, she's so proud of you. We watched your blue show like nice things yeah. and i go oh wow she watched you know and then holtzman came in and i had bought her cookies you know she loved those yeah, poppy I mean, seed cookies so i bought her cookies so they put them out and holtzman came in ate all the cookies <laughs> he was making her laugh he started yeah she started yelling at um she had a maid working yeah. another uh asian woman i don't i don't remember her name but she was just you know, it wasn't Alfred. It was another yeah. one. And he goes, you can't get one. Of, what kind of help you got here? They can't bring me something to drink. I'm dying over <laughs> here. And he's like, and she's laughing so hard. She's sliding out yeah. of her chair. Like she's like, ar, ar, ar. like nothing's coming out because she had lost her verbal skills. Yeah. And I mean, it, I left and cried for like yeah. an hour, but it apparently, was more because it was so beautiful. Apparently after but... that, Tommy went over and then, <laughs> you know, why, why is Mitzi slouched over? On... <laughs> All right. No spots for Holtzman. I I hear what you're saying. <laughs> it's body language. She chose me. I'm cookie. Who brought cookies? Go. Well, well you I got to go down to the comedy store and tell people Argus is knocking <laughs> on them. <laughs> what? Why would you do that? <laughs> I was there. Uh, we were talking about the demise of Charlie Hill. And uh, he was on his deathbed. And his uh, 
son called me and asked to arrange a goodbye with Mitzi. This is, oh, this is in 2014. Oh, yeah, yeah. And this actually happened. She, you know, she'd been in the twilight zone for about three or four years at that time. And just as, as Eleanor knows, we went over there all the time, bless her heart. Mitzi would just watch TV. Yeah. Just focus just on TV. Out. Yeah, yeah. And so I, uh, I gave uh, Charlie's son my phone number. Charlie was going to call me. I was going to be standing next to Mitzi. Charlie wanted to say goodbye to Mitzi. Okay, so Charlie calls. I talked to Charlie for about five minutes. We laugh about some of the stuff we used to do. And I said, uh, here's Mitzi. If you want to say goodbye to her, she's, you know, she's she's not really there. But y- y'all will be meeting each other pretty soon. So here we go. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> and he, la- and he laughed. He laughed. Yeah. And so I, I gave the phone to Mitzi, and Charlie started talking to her. And with God as my witness, she snapped right out of the twilight zone. I believe it. And started talking to her. Said, Charlie, I love you so much. It was so wonderful, all the things we did. And uh, you, I'm so proud of you and everything you've done. And I'm telling you, uh, no one loves you as much as I did. And, and uh, if you, the Pritchard Pryor show, the Tonight Show, we were always there for you. I'm going watching this going, my God, she wow. hadn't talked in four or five years. It's like some spiritual thing that Charlie Hill evoked from her. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then You're such a good she, guy. they said goodbye. She starts crying. Yeah, she hands me the phone. Try, say goodbye, Charlie. Love you, man. See you on the other side. Hang up. And Mitzi goes right back to the TV set like nothing happened. Zone back in. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Man. Well, he was definitely someone that I was would worth come it, out man. of it for Charlie. Yeah. 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 I still had my bracelets. He always gave me these peace bracelets. Yeah. Charlie would bring them in all the time. So uh, he, they're my favorite. Hi, how are you? Hi, hi how, how are, are you? Hi, how are you? <laughs> it, Charlie, he was great. And <laughs> the white people have the I did. I did my drunk Argus impression for Charlie. And oh, he, yeah. And he was like, well, I wasn't expecting that. <laughs> and, and then, when Charlie laughed, there was, yeah, no, it was he was like Ricky Ricardo. It, 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 was, ah! it was like a, yeah. like a yeah, scream yeah, yeah, almost. Yeah. And then he, every time he was with anyone else from the older class, he would see me and then he'd like give me the wave over. And then he'd be like, you remember Argus, right? And then I, I would have to go right into doing the impression. And then whoever was. Argus like, doesn't like the impression. They'd be like, why, why is it? Why are you doing that? That was the same question. Everyone went, why are you doing that? <laughs> Even Robin Williams. Why on earth are you doing a, an August Hamilton impression? <laughs> why would you? Why would you? What's the purpose of doing it? And I go, well, when it I, kills the comics. Yeah, I go, when I got here, they said you can make fun of anything, just don't make fun of Argus. And I was like, all right, we're gonna have to make fun of Argus. See, because they made you the rat. Yep. Isn't that terrible? And they just said he's off limits because you know Mitzi protects he's royalty. Him. And I was like, oh, he's comedy store royalty. But I was twenty-one, and oh, you're twenty-one. Going, oh, he's off limits, is he? <laughs> And, and unfortunately, this is like the jackass era. So I'm like, yeah. all right, well, I'm going to have to, you know, staple my nutsack to something. Yeah. And if not, then I have to make fun of the person we're not allowed to make fun of. But, he also, he got hired to work with Dice because of that impression. Really? And he says to me, he goes, can you fly to Miami tomorrow? And I go, yeah. And he goes, y- you don't do the August thing on stage, right? <laughs> They're like, what? No. And he's like, okay, because that's the only thing I know about you. So. <laughs> you have like what are you worrying about that? You, have, you, have, you have like a regular act, right? <laughs> yeah. That's not, okay. I just didn't know. I thought maybe you just do August. Like, no. You know the punchline to all this? Harris, Harris Pete will tell you this. Harris is still up in Montana. Right? Oh, yeah, we've had him on. He'll tell you that whenever August was drunk, he would snap sober on stage. You would never know it. Yeah, you never know it. Oh, and on stage, yeah, a pro. As soon as you got off stage, it's the adrenaline. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it's, all, all the stories. I I've never heard. hit on you either. I know. I feel out of. Oh wait, I was sober loop. by the time you got here. That's yeah, it. you were. Yeah, so drunk, drunk Argus. I I was told I wasn't your type. No, no, no. Uh, my last waitress here. <sighs> Hold on, can we? Can we go through all the way? Edie. A tray Edie. is not just the Did you ever know Oh, yeah, Edie? I knew Edie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love Edie. I love yeah. Edie. Yeah. That's she, my mom's she name. She was gone. They had already left. She's by here. The time Bring Edie out. Edie. <laughs> Edie. This is your life. Yeah. <laughs> the Argus Hamilton, this is your life, would be legendary. Cindy, the, the you manager. Remember the paid out you got for that doctor's appointment? <laughs> <laughs> Cindy, the manager. We liked her. Really? I remember that. <laughs> really? I love that. Cute little like, I don't brunette. Even remember who that is. Real it's cute possible. little brunette. She was the manager, real sweet. 
And what? You, you, uh, Argus would always be in the office talking to Sydney. <laughs> Cindy. It was great. Which Cindy? I don't know. That no. was her name. That's she was. I always knew. I believe you, we referred to her as forgettable Cindy. <laughs> she was really sweet. She she was pregnant. She was always having, she had like three kids or something. Oh no wonder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you don't remember her last name. <laughs> <laughs> the second kid. The responsibility. No, yeah, yeah. thank you. <laughs> I'm not even gonna remember your name. The sadder but wiser God, girl for me. Her last name, but she was so sweet. She was here for a while, but she didn't seem to fit here because she was mm -hmm. such a nice person. Mm -hmm. Not that you had to be mean to be here, mm -hmm. but like a certain. Well, Mitzi's you had number, to have a certain. Mitzi's Toughness. top criterion was that you had to be skinny to be a waitress here sure. because but she, she cheated like the pull. fire marshal and she wanted as many tables in as possible oh, so you could get in and out of it. Can't have a big ass. We, yeah, through. we used to have uh, uh, 350 to 400 people in the main room. Absolutely. For Jackie Mason, we were at 405. Yeah, and you, could, you could pack that. I, all my pants were ripped on the sides from catching on the tables. Those were fingernails. <laughs> <laughs> Little Jewish fingernails Go coming at me. Oh, yeah. at Where's that. my tea? I gotta Where's my her. coffee? <laughs> yeah, it was great. It was great. And Carlin, too. We did Carlin for 10 nights or yeah, something like that. Yeah, that's right. And then the Smothers Brothers. Like, I was going to say, a lot. They, we back. were way past fire marshals for Robin Williams and Smothers Brothers yep. yeah. when I was Martin. a doorman. And, the, and then if they would come in, Mitzi going go talk to them. I'm like, what am I going to do? Like, do I have to sleep with the whole... There's five of <laughs> oh, yeah, them. I mean, <laughs> I, that's one no, hose, the, the, huh? I remember we, we, we would do toys then. for tots uh, for the fire people, and sure. then they'd leave us alone. Yeah, I think we still do it. Yeah. 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 I remember when I was a doorman, Richie basically finding a even more crowded area to get four or five firefighters <laughs> in in the back for Robin Williams' show. That was about 75 people over. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. The, the limit. And they came in, they're like, yeah, you can't do this. And Richie was like, I think we got four seats. Right <laughs> <laughs> we still got space, so... You know, we're just filling the seats that are in the room. Yeah, yeah. You can count them if you want, but I'm pretty sure this is what the number's supposed to be. <laughs> and the guy's just like, where are the seats? He's like, right over here. And the guys went and it's sat like down good and fellas. Watched. He yeah. just brought him a table. Oh, damn. Yeah. yeah, emptied the belly room out. <laughs> get, get the women out of the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> so good. Yeah. All right, but you're not going to get any of that stuff at any of the other comedy clubs. No, none of it. So come to the comedy store, check it out. That's all we're saying. Yeah, I don't know when this is coming out, so go to my website, Eleanor J. Kerrigan, for dates and stuff like that. I'll be here. Yeah. And check out my special. <laughs> Let's talk about your special. I hope it's already out uh, at this point. I don't know. Uh, it's coming. It, it'll. It's been out. It's been out. It's already got a million views. Wink. So catch up. I've got a presidential campaign to cover. <laughs> Um, is, is this going to be gonzo journalism style? We're going to send you in. Are you still writing? Fear and loathing on the campaign trail. For no, premise set up punchline. Nice. And we'll make you laugh at both candidates, no matter who gets nominated. Good. But are you still writing for newspapers right yeah. now? Okay. Yeah, we talked about that when oh, you were I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, when the men were chatting, <laughs> we handled the business. <laughs> stuff, <Eleanor. laughs> well, we're brandy and cigars. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, so... You can just check me out here and at the Comedy Store. And um, otherwise, yeah, I'll just be walking around similar to Michael Douglas from Falling Down. <laughs> <laughs> Ready oh my to gosh. snap at any moment. <laughs> so come check out a show. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Argus. Thanks, nice to Argus. be here.